I didn't hear you come aboard, ma'am. You are the watchman? I am the captain. Then who is Captain O'Neiden? Captain O'Neiden is the owner, ma'am. He'll be aboard soon, if you care to sit there. I was having to make a man. It took said, I see. Yes, ma'am. Might I ask who you are and what is the nature of your business? My name is Miss Indigo Jones, and my business is with your employer. Yes, ma'am. Anne is virtually separated from James and been living in the most dreadful circumstances. Did you know? Yes. But you did not think to tell me. Since when has other people's unhappiness been your concern? I want to know why. Then you can ask her, because she's due here with repayments. Repayments? I lent her a small sum. I didn't ask for it back. She insisted on making repayments. Her father tells me she's been living in common lodging houses. Did you know that? Anne has a will of her own. I did not think you could be so indifferent. I don't understand. What happened to that cashier's post, Charlotte Chumleys? I was dismissed. The other work people wouldn't have a woman take on a man's job. Might have known it. Well, spinster you started, and spinster you'll end. Look at you, taking in washing. A naval officer's daughter. You should be glad I remembered you. Look at your hands, a washerwoman's hands. I make my way as best I can. I'll say one word. You've got a husband, go to him and make your peace. No. Now listen, you're a married woman and you've obligations. Every week that goes by, you put yourself further in the wrong. In a court of law, you wouldn't have a leg to stand on. It's desertion. In one... one word? Well, I can't stand to see you like this. Where are you living? With Alan Jessup. What, a strike leader's wife? I had no one else to turn to. You'd best turn to James before he loses sight of you altogether. The cable jammed on the bell. The horse pipes were torn out and her bowels were drawn under. She was swept clean from stem to stern. Where's the Samantha now? Anchored off Cork. Uh, is the damage made good? We had 120 days of voyage. From? Peru. And her cargo, Mr. Holmes. Captain Baines, if you'd be so good as to leave us. <laughs> now, I want to get this quite clear, Miss Jones. In passage from Peru, he anchored off Cork and uh, came here alone. Yes. Just you and Captain Jones aboard. And a pantryman. Hmm. Just the three of you, eh? Well, short hand is hardly the word for it. Why didn't you send it to Cork for assistance? Not possible. There is no one word to describe that voyage. First the earthquake, then superstition. A voyage beset with difficulties and incidents. Mm. And all your crew deserted, eh? Deserted or dead. Mm. After the earthquake, the carpenter thought he saw the Colucci. Colucci? It's a legend of Chilean sailors. A phantom ship. She proceeds, then follows disaster. An apparition, you understand. Uh, and of those that died? Nine by drowning. And the rest? It would be wrong of me not to be frank at the outset. There was a certain amount of fever aboard. Ah. Uh, how many cases? Three, certain. Uh, Miss Jones, the Samantha's cargo. She carries guano. Bird dropping. When fertilizers are in short supply, as they are now, guano fetches up to 20 pounds a ton. The farmers are in sore need of it. Where did you pick it up? I cannot tell you that, of course. Do not believe the South American government's put an export duty on I have found a source where the controls do not apply. Well, then all you want me for is a fetch and carry job. No. She must be quickly discharged on arrival. Yeah, so that you may return for another shipload without delay, eh? The discovery of undisturbed deposits of guano is a matter of luck and information. Neither holds good forever. Ah. So we cannot risk three weeks quarantine or too many questions. Oh, I understand, Mr. Jones. Well, Captain O'Neill? Cork to Liverpool? Will you help me shepherd this answer home? I've got to the stage where I can't reason with the girl. And James is locked up on board, won't speak to a soul. He's got a woman of colour aboard. A woman of colour? Oh, she's not a fandango. No, she's a charterer, I gather. Could you spare another drop? I have an affliction of the gums from my naval days. No, oh, Anne is determined not to return home. Then we'd best not interfere. If James has a charter, things may very well improve upon his return. Is it all you have to say, madam? With Robert's brother estranged? Brother or no, James has done quite enough harm in this port. What's the job, sir? I told you, mouth shut job. And we'll have a lady passenger aboard. 
I wish you could have my cabin. I'll toss it down here. Right. I want to sail on tonight's tide. Not a word of this ashore. What's about first, man? Right, you. Name? Twenty more going, Captain. Twenty? I says twenty for twenty. Where were you rated able, Sigma? Copper ore trade. Swansea, you know. What ships? Paquettes, mostly. Did they not have names? Answer the captain. I for cats. A hard man, are you, Morgan? I've been all round, Captain. Keep your mouth shut, Kenny Morgan. Depends. On what? On who's paying for one and uh, what the job is. Fetch and carry, Morgan. Schooner selling from Cork, short-handed. Month's wages, week's work. I've been short-handed before, Captain. Ah, wait upon deck. And the next one, Captain. Hey. Oh, I smell that smell before somewhere. B Billy Bones, sir. Knacker's yard it is. Well, no place for a seaman, sir. Well, what are you doing there, then? Uh, the Knacker's daughter, sir. Well, six months gone, so he had to make an effort, sir. What ships? Uh, the Money Wigram boats on the Eastern Year Run. Got your papers? No, I ain't got none, sir. Why not? Knacker's got them. Trying to keep me strapped. Oh, you'll be anxious to start sailing again, then, eh? Oh, a long haul and foulman for orders to do me, sir. All right, sign them up, Captain. Thank you, sir. And the next one, Captain. Thank right, you. Name? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, I can see you've got your discharge papers. Name? Ah. Uh. He's got no roof to his mouth, sir. No roof to his mouth, eh? Well, it's the kind of man we want for this job. Can't answer back. Sign him on, Captain Baines. Uh. It's a quick turnaround. Night and day unloading, double gangs. Why? Well, two reasons. Cargo's worth more than £10,000, and she wants to get back before anybody else finds the sauce. Do you know the sauce? Not yet. It's an athlete a rather unfortunate voyage. Fever, desertion, probably a few irregularities. But if we can get her discharged without an eyebrow raised, we can bargain for a bit of that cargo, you and I. Fever, you say? Uh, yeah, but you've got a cousin in the customs, eh? John? Mm. Yes, he's an outdoor <laughs> officer, but... Uh... Well, I don't quite see what that's Well, I don't want anything to get in the way of a quick discharge. You know, it's just so much routine. Ships logged a bit, check papers, clean bill of health. Now, if you were there with your cousin, John, you could make it uh, a rather social affair. Very well, James. I'll see what I can do on your behalf. Oh, well, but on our behalf. <laughs> Yours from your sister, she asked me to bring it to you. Well, I had no idea you were at this. I've not seen my sister. She knew me, of course. I spoke so high of you. Does the captain know you're at this thing? It is, I've not told him. You see, I've, I've not spoken to him for some time. I, I urge you with father. Captain Baines! Excuse me, ma'am. Captain O'Neill said I was to use your cabin. Be so good as to stir my gear. Yes, ma'am. Who's that? Charterer. Charterer. I don't know what Mr. Aneden is about in, in anything, ma'am. I find your Captain Baines unspeakably coarse. Ah, well, he wouldn't grace Sam Cunard's table, but he is a good seaman. So am I. Now then, I understand there are some complications. Well, in addition to ferrying out a new crew, you have asked me to engineer the discharge of a ship under very unusual circumstances. My partner. You did not mention a partner. Mr. Fraser will be of invaluable assistance to us. Then what is the difficulty? Well, it's what it always is, Miss Indigo. You see, Miss Indigo, the county families have grand mottos in Latin, but the need in line has how much? I'll do your fetch and carry job for you, on condition that we split the profits of the cargo three ways. Yourself, your father, and us. One quarter. Payable in cash the moment the ship discharges. By whose reckoning? Well, the current price of Guano. Payable the moment she clears customs, her cargo discharged and delivered as per bills of lady. Provided that she has a clean bill of health. James, you seem very anxious about this clean bill of health. Pardon, oh. sir, a word. Captain Baines, I'm engaged on company business. Leave to speak, Captain Baines, I can wait. 
It's Mrs. O'Neill, sir. You will excuse me. I'm told you wish to see me. No, I, I just chanced to see Captain Baines. With his sack on your back. I've experienced worse things, even than being spoken to like that. That's what I say. Well, our charter is to entertain. James, if you'd only unbend. Unbend? Oh, you've so much pride still. My pride's to stand upright and not to go begging. And to do that, I'll use my wits if I have to bother you with your, with your hands and your chapel art about nothing but sickness. I'll remember that. Look, I must sail with this tide. I'll ask Baines to summon a cab. James, is that foreign woman sailing with you? Ah, she is. Is she the charterer? She is. I've no wish to interfere. And no good advice, if you please. If there's a profit involved, I'll, I'll sell with the Queen of Sheba and not a qualm of conscience about it. Mr. Baines! Yes, sir. Kindly see Mrs. Aneden ashore. And in future, trouble me with ship's business only. Aye, aye, sir. I'm sorry, ma'am. A patch and carry job, you said? Yes, ma'am. And he's told you nothing more? No, ma'am. There's nothing illegal, is it? Oh, no, ma'am. He's just not been himself, that's all. Snapping the heads off everyone, certain strangers. I don't know what lengths my husband will go to to make his profit, Mr. Baines. My greatest concern is what he will do for himself. Listen, You've done the job, Miss Indigo, give you? Yes, all except him. Johnny, see to it now, eh? Wait in with ankle shackles. Ankle shackles all gone. What? Johnny, see to it. Me got both ankles. He is dead, is he? Yes, Captain. Him dead. Back up with my sister Alice in Wellington Street. She was asking about the charter if it was, uh, well, you know, all about board, legal like. Boy oh, didn't say anything, just ferrying out sailors to a stranded scooter. Who said what? Well, what little I do. She's your wife and not a stranger. She, she, she's been good to me. Look, I told you, this was a mouth shut job. It's only, and I don't like having words or feelings. Sealed orders I've been under before, but mouth shots, not sealed orders. And I am the master, and I have a right to know the charter proper. Board her, bring her up channel, and you'll follow on behind. You're taking her into Liverpool? No, the captain will do that. I'm deliverer, no more. You'll pick me up before she's towed in. What's the cargo? Guano. Guano? <laughs> the birds get rid of it because they don't want it. Why should we have it? Because it's worth more than 20 pounds a ton. Now, this Miss Indigo, she's found a source with no export duty to pay. Well, why don't we go after a shipload of sales? Because I don't know the source. Because this Miss Indigo, she might talk a lot, but she knows when to keep her mouth shut. Well, Chile, Peru, Ginger Island, or Lobos de Afuero. That's the fever coast. Morgan! I got some work for you, my lad. What? Lifesides among them. Now then, young twenty, on your feet, my lad, move! Of course I'll move, but I can't work. There, sign some Samantha. Well, you've heard of ship's articles, haven't you? Ray, do not think me flirtatious when I am but gay. Those are my letters. Returned them, did he? Daniel Fogarty always behaved honourably. Uh, did he indeed? The father of your child. Look. Must you leave them in a drawer where I must surely find them? Because we are married, am I to have no life of my own? No thoughts, no private place. Where, you deceive me? Are my thoughts to be purchased? Look, what am I to do these long nights? You leave me alone constantly. I'm interested in neither your steamship nor your drawing board. Oh, I... I'm sorry, Elizabeth. It's the age-old wives' complaint. I apologise. Oh, come to bed. Oh, come on, Elizabeth. I'm not tired. All the better, then. Oh, save me your jests. Elizabeth! William was breathing heavily. In case he should wake, I shall stay beside him. Looks like the Samantha. 
See the way that Kroger is rigged? She's come home short-handed. A fever boat, more like. She may have had fever. You'll never get a crew aboard her. They don't know, and they won't. I bought her myself, square off. But you'll never appear her in Liverpool. Been arranged. Arranged? Mr. Fraser? Now, tonight, when the crew got their heads down, I'll board her with Miss Indigo. Get me down to square off. You'll never get away with it. It's my wrist, Captain Ray. It's not yours. Me, sir. <laughs> this is Captain O'Neiden. Uh, Jones is the name, sir. Uh, Captain Zachary Jones. <clears throat> I should like to see the forecastle. Ship's log, papers, consul signatures from ports of loading. First, the forecastle. Here, you. Come with me. If Johnny talks, he won't. Yes, boss. What's the case? Bono! Where from? Arica, boss. Chile. North by Pisagua, San Marcos de Arica. Guana, long time in Tacna, brought down by Kuliman. Thank you, John. Thank you. Captain says, sign Samantha, but he's boarded her alone. Why? Well, I'll tell you. Make sure you've got a featherbed boat all the way home. Now get up topside, you'll graft here the way. Uh, not me. I signed Samantha. That was yesterday. Holy Stone in today, I think, and then we'll have the bilges pumping back to Holy Stone in. Because now you're at the master's table, lad. And I come up the oars pipe. The hard way. Oh, I'll learn you, lad. When I finish with you, you'll be a real Western Ocean man. Blue water. Blue eyes. The last man died of fever in that fortune. Well, I can't remember exact. No entries in your log? No, it was. I got you no log at all. Ships, papers, bills, a lady. They will be found and put in order. Aye, aye, aye. That so sticks of fever. You know, the way she is, you'll never get a clean bill of health, and without that, you'll rotten quarantine bird droppings and all. Now, before the crew come aboard, she's got to be squared off, stem to stern, fumigated, white lined, and if you have any drinking water, you want to get rid of it. Drinking water? <laughs> How do you think I survived, mister? Get that. Uh, stole that. Oh, look, I want all the clothing and dunnage ditched. I want the bulkheads lined, top to bottom. Now, yes. just have you. I want it done yes. now. Folks, oh, white lined. Yes. Johnny, he will long time want the order. Right, come along then, chop, chop. Captain, you need to take the ship in alone. When the hands get aboard, it might be of help if you had more than one leg under you. Yeah. Beardless boys. <laughs> Thinks I'm your daughter. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> oh, indigo carriers. Oh. You reek of drink. Drink? And why not? You've seen the things I see in this trip. The things I done for you, you do more than drink. Huh? Huh? If it's a fever what's worrying you, first thing I done was ditch the drinking water. Barricade myself in here.
What happened to a long boat then? Mouth shut job, remember. So you say with Bucos and been all over, but this voyage is to be quiet. Maybe we shall stand it. I didn't know that you knew that when you signed on. What happened to her then, sir? All hands it must have been. They were paid in sovereign. The moment that she gets into port. And who be? This way seems fairly dry. Yeah, it's clean, ain't it? You ought to sail on some real pool packets, mate. Did you see her yard? She came home and took horses with the gallant sent down and her gear half carried away. And I'll tell you something else. I can smell a blood pot, I can. There's killing been done in here. Sailor killing. <laughs> Monday, 20th July. Latitude, 6 by 58 north. Longitude, 21 by 31 west. Course, south by east, three quarter east. <laughs> Ship struck by strong gust of wind. Heeled over suddenly, and the gallant carried away about two feet above the cap. Pantius, uh, twenty first, twenty second, twenty second. That was the day we put the mate over the side. Also hanging in ribbons. It was flapping all the time when Johnny and I carried the mate on deck. Alive he was when we put him over the side. That sail flapping above us all the time like an undertaker's blind. Johnny Hivo. Johnny Hivo? Yes. Who are you here for, Johnny? Oh, me, Captain Steiger. <laughs> How many men he killed, Johnny? How many sailor men? Oh, Captain, he no kill many sailor men. How many, Johnny? Captain, he drink plenty whiskey. He forget plenty. And what about his daughter? Daughter? <laughs> no daughter. He got him hot chicken from Coquimbo. She very lich, bad lady, she. Yes? She get licher. Very nasty, always making Johnny Hevo plenty chop chop. Well, what happened to the crew then? Ah, oh, the crew. Oh, very sorry, Captain. Questions, Lord. Questions, Captain. You signed on in passage and you'll sign off with a jingle in your tin. Now, what more does a sailor want? There's been sailor killing done on this ship. We're only bringing her home, Morgan. Whatever happens on board this ship before we joined her is no concern of ours. Out of there. Me no steal, boss. Me lucky. Me no steal live sailor. Live sailor? No, boss. Only dead men's. Me cut links. Back links. Me sure. Better on Johnny Heaver than David John's locker, no? Look, boss. In back, me cut links with finger. Finger? Me cut him, no come off yet. Me sure. 
Jo, nada. Kakas, rabara, jo. Nå, vas, hold i finger. At du kan lute den kan fiver. Fiver. Den misser sig. I bare bare sælge en little push. En år går til David Jones. Little push? I'm scared. Nå, vas. Jeg sagde, nå, still, I'm scared. No, she said they will die of fever, so why not? Fever is God fever. Fever come making face all sores. Really nasty, pretty lady. And the captain knew about this? Capitan, like hot chicken too much. She said, jump, he jump. She said, push, he push. You mean he drowned them? <laughs> well, sir, put your papers ready. I got it all, mister. Including a rat certificate. And console signatures from all over. Well, you'll have to do a bit more than wave them in the air. So will my partner when we get there. Huh? Do you hear the way he treats me? After what I've done? What I put up with? What I witnessed for you? I bury so many dead. We run out of shackles to weight them down, even. What's he got, then? This scout boatman. I'll tell you what he haven't got. He haven't got eyes what seem what I've seen. Neither the dying, nor the cursing, nor the looks they gave them that were still alive. Oh, you're like the Kaluchi you are. One seen and the jig's as good as up. Zachary Jones. Uh -huh. I understand from the daughter he's quite a character and well known on the Guano Coast. The Fever Coast, eh? <laughs> oh, Guano is such filthy stuff, you'll be as anxious as we are to get it off the docks. Uh, shall we go out on the hero? It's against regulations. Well, surely you don't have regulations this early on a wet Monday morning. Launch us alongside the cement and out. Very good, Captain Baines. What if they find out about the fever? What fever, Captain Baines? <clears throat> Are you carrying any mails, Captain? A uh, mail, sir? Uh, not this trip, no, no. And can I see your manifest? Certainly, sir. Indigo. <laughs> ah, thank you. <clears throat> and um, have you anything to declare? Oh, usual stores under bond. Uh, spirits? Uh, much depleted, I'm afraid. <clears throat> There's been a run of smuggling from the American ports. Oh. Uh, cigars and the like. Uh, mister, if you could give me a cigar, you'd make a friend. Oh, I think I can oblige. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You, um, didn't make the ship's number, Captain. Number? No. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to have to crave your indulgence. Mm -hmm. A flag locker went. Aye. A flag locker and the galley washed out. <laughs> and no fire for days, no. Mm. And there's no sickness on board? Oh, none whatsoever, sir. Case of dropsy early on. Blew itself overboard. <laughs> now, let me fill your glass. Oh, thank you, Captain. I'll put the rummagers on board. Then if you'll come along to the customs office with the uh, cargo manifest, we'll see to your clean bit of health. Thank you, thank you, sir. We're very anxious that everything should be signed quickly. We would like the ship turned round as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, cargo of guano, eh? You want to return to the source before someone else finds it? How soon? As soon as the papers are signed, but... Uh, <clears throat> Be a formality. <laughs> I can see the only thing that's bothering you, sir. And what's that? No cigars. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to oblige, sir. And we've seen we brought the contraband with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I want a new crew signed this morning. Eight men, lad. You objected to the last crowd. It's time you can pick your own. So, with this time... Where are we bound and what's the cargo? You know where you're bound, then? The Charlotte Ward, sir. Pierre had jump and off in a hurry. That's all I know. I'll see you. Yeah, good luck. Oh, come on, Johnny. You come long sides. Plenty jobs long sides. I oh, need work. Johnny Lichman now. You come with us to Mother Hubbard's, mate. Johnny here for a long time in Samantha. I'm very grateful to you, Captain O'Neiden. We're sending for South America as soon as possible. What are your plans? Oh, I shall find some cargo or other, no doubt. I never see such close mouths as in this company. 
What are we both for from there? Going up the tree stump, sir. Round the horn and up the Guano coast. Oh, you uh, found out where Mr. Nicholas Guano is then? I've never seen a man like Mr. O'Neill. He don't miss a trick. One of you say something. Come on, Anne, it's time to settle your differences. Your husband's home from the sea. Now swallow your pride and make it up. Oh, not I. It was James who asked me to come here. I did. I did not say that. You you said that. Well, well, Sarah intimated. Look, you said Anne said she wanted to see me. We meant well, James. You're like a stone man. Had you not a word to say to her? Well, I came, didn't I? Oh. We've made a step forward. This little venture has put us on the road to regaining control of the company. And we can buy nigh on £2,000 worth of shares. Another news for a new trade. What trade? Fetch and carry. Free as air. James, well, may I have a word with you alone? Well, if it's company business, we are all directors. Three seamen have died in a boarding house in Wellington Street of yellow fever. Yellow fever? Paid off the Samantha. Are they sure it's yellow fever? There's no doubt whatsoever. Yellow fever acts quickly and violently. But in this hot weather, it, it, it's worse than cholera. And we brought it here. Shocking. It's true, James. We are responsible. Oh, nonsense. She paid off under her own master. Closed and opened articles in the normal run of commerce. Uh, James! Albert. In the normal run of commerce. Another one from Wellington Street, the seventh in a week. All of Yellow Jack and all off the same ship. What ship was that? A Chilean packet, the Samantha. Oh, God curse whoever brought her into this port. The fact of the matter is seven people have died and there's danger of fever spreading along Wellington Street. In every case, there's a connection with men paid off the Samantha. Well, Samantha's discharged and turned round. But with our help, James. Yes. Closed and opened articles under our own master. With our help again, Cousin John here and myself. That's right. As you well know, Albert Bradley facilitated her discharge. As customs officer, I gave her a clean bill of health. And now she's brought fever here. Of eight crew members discharged, seven are dead. And eighth man's aboard the Charlotte Roads bound for South America. You say you boarded the Samantha at sea? Ah, yeah. Owners required a fetch and carry job. A crew had deserted or died. Of fever? Hmm. Well, she was a Chilean ship from the fever coast. Uh, and those ships are always at risk. But did you know there had been fever aboard? Yes. We both knew. It had been a long time in passage. Uh, I thought it had blown itself out. There. Incriminated. How oh, so incriminated? Fever is always a risk with foreign commerce. My interest was in the gain. And I was right. A cargo of guana paid her owners and ourselves off handsomely. Oh, yes. But I was... I granted her a clean bill of health. Well... Did you see any fever aboard her? No. Well, did a master or owner uh, declare any fever? Uh, no. Well, then you had no reason not to give her a clean bit of health or I for shipping a crew aboard her. Now, there's an end to it. We're all our sex. Our sex? There are men dead. We should declare our involvement. Declare it? For what purpose? A mistake should be reported. Look, the nub of the matter is that at all times the Samantha was the responsibility of our master. You went a leg beneath him for half the voyage and told me that. Our owner would better have uh, hired a more reliable master. James. The truth must out. Yes, of course it must. I cannot understand your, your diffidence. You must please yourselves. My advice is, nothing said, and for good reason. Your own skin? Not so. Then what? James, I will have an answer. In view of these deaths, there's to be an inquiry into the Samantha's arrival, spread of the disease into Wellington Street. I suspect the public water supply is contaminated. And in that case... We should state our part in the affair exactly. I think not. Not good business to be associated with disaster. However slight the connection, I'm more concerned on your behalf, you know. If you're considering the good name of the Fraser Shipbuilding Yards, I am, after all, merely an employee. Aye, but your father is owner. This inquiry. It's rumoured that he is to be chairman. My father becomes involved. He'll stop at nothing till he gets to the bottom of it. 
fly. Fly. I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. Fly is the word for that man. I knew it the moment I first set eyes on him. And heartless with it. What did he say to you when at last he stepped ashore? Well, what did he say in his brother's shop? Sarah arranged that meeting between James and I. She tried to mend the situation. She meant well, but she served only to strengthen the rift between us. How long is it now that you've parted? It's a month. You, logic and common sense went out of the window the moment that man appeared. You've let yourself sink down to the most dreadful circumstances. And me with you. That was my ship once, the Charlotte Rhodes. Till he came along, have you forgot that? And where is she now? Does anybody know? She sailed with Captain Baines in command as soon as the Samantha docked. Ah. That reminds me, Captain Baines gave me some advance notes for his sister Alice. I still have to cash them. Did he mention he'd be away on a long voyage? I don't understand. Uh, well, with Yellow Jack, there's always quarantine laws. The great immobility of ships. James got away so fast, I wouldn't be surprised if he hadn't an inkling of what lay in store for the crew that came off the Samantha. No, James couldn't have been aware there was fever aboard. If he had done, he'd have made it known. What if it prevented the Charlotte Road sailing for profit? James is concerned for himself and for profit, but he'd never do anything criminal. <laughs> You never come aboard, there, Samantha, but I did. And I know it happened. A captain drowned members of his crew? Before they died of the fever. But I've known some hard captains in my time. Regular built down his Johnny Cakes, but I can hardly believe that. It was the captain's bit of fancy who made him do it. She was frightened to hell of catching the fever, losing her looks. Hangman's nose she deserves. Who told you? The cook. He helped the captain do it. They waited, the poor devils, with anchor shackles. Did Mr. O'Neill know that? I don't know. He had only one word for that trip. Mouth shut. Drowning sick men. Mr. O'Neill couldn't have known. But it wasn't taken with a French sailor ship. Definitely not. It's coming back. Then it can go out again. <laughs> I see, Mr. Fraser is in public life again. My husband. Who? His father, madam. He used to chair the inquiry into this ship everyone's talking about. Where did you hear that? They made the announcement at the town hall. I can't interest madam in the latest Spanish garment, too. No. Can you finish now, please? Of course. Are you quite sure Mr. Fraser is to chair the inquiry? It was announced this morning. Oh, excuse me, uh, I have James with me. You'd better stay. Well, not while Miriam is here. She might say something else. Oh. You had better stay. I see the tenor of your feelings is not even disguised before servants now. I don't ignore you entirely. I, uh, I thought you should know that your father is to head the inquiry into this outbreak of fever. So it's true. I suppose it's to satisfy the public disquiet. Oh, excuse me. You were right, James. My father is to chair the inquiry. Then the less said, the better. A law of silence, James? A discretion. In whose interest? Those whom discretion will benefit most. And your own interest? What nobility of purpose do you hide your light behind now? Commerce and good sense. And in your interests, Elizabeth, you'd best concern yourself in women's matters. I trust your father will turn out to be more than just a fair weather friend. You must hope so, James. Go right up to the Mizzen Peak Halyard, and if there's any chaffing, sing out. Aye, aye, Captain. Don't forget, check the seas now. Have you ever been to South America, sir? I never been past Falmouth, sir. Foul weather gear we'll need there. Foul weather gear for foul weather place. And all for a shipload of bird droppings. Why no? According to Mr. O'Neill, it's all clear profit. It is. And all we have to do is to shovel it up. Full and by. Aye, aye, sir. No, no, you always repeat. When I says full and by, you comes back. Full and by it is, sir. Full and by it is, sir. That's the hammer. Now, eye on the wind. We don't want her in irons. That is looking all right to you. 
All secure, Captain. Are you sure? Aye, aye, sir. Gentlemen, I think we might now proceed with the regulations governing the entry of vessels from foreign ports. Mr. Collector of Customs? Yes, sir. Oh, please sit down, Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice, am I to take it there is no trace of the owners of the Samantha? None whatsoever, sir. Then did she have any dealings with any Liverpool merchants? Uh, that'll be a cargo, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Guano. Yes, sir. It was dispersed in the usual way, very much in demand. I believe it was already spoke for. What I can't understand, Mr. Rice, is that there's nobody here to represent her owners. No agent, no brokers, not a soul. She was a foreign ship. <clears throat> she was a foreign ship, sir, and sailed immediately upon discharge. Oh, so it seems. Well, now, perhaps we should address ourselves to the manner of her docking. Perhaps you would advise me as to the appropriate regulation. Article 28, sir. Mm -hmm. The master of every ship infected with cholera, yellow fever, or plague shall cause to be hoisted between sunrise and sunset a day signal consisting of a large flag of yellow and black quartering and during the hours of darkness a triangle of red and white lanterns. Mm. And was the Samantha flying a flag of that description? Not as far as I know, sir. I see. Well, now, perhaps you would give me the titles of all persons boarding the Samantha in order. There'd be the pilot, sir. Is the pilot here? After the pilot? Then the harbour pilot, sir. Then the customs officer. Your department, Mr. Rice. Yes, sir. Perhaps you should advise me as to what steps are taken to ascertain that a vessel is free from infection. Uh, there is the pratique, sir. Clean bill of health. And upon whose say-so is the pratique granted? Generally upon the master's say-so, sir. Indeed. And correct me if I'm wrong, you're mere layman, but uh, since the Samantha entered this port, there have been seven deaths... Seven? Seven is great, yes. ...from yellow fever. And if, as you say, she was boarded in the proper fashion, am I not right in assuming that there must have been... Uh, Great irregularity and uh, lack of the usual precautions on the part of all the persons boarding? It remains to be seen, sir. It does indeed. I take it you did not board this vessel yourself, Mr. Rice? Uh, no, sir. Then before we address ourselves to the pilotage, perhaps you'd be good enough to bring before me the customs officer who granted the pratique. I'm afraid I can't, sir. Can't, Mr. Rice? No, sir. It was my junior, and uh, he is himself sick. Of yellow fever? Of uh, colic. I have a certificate to that effect. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir, but uh, it's your nephew, young John Fraser. I think perhaps we should adjourn for a moment while I take advice on what's best to be done. Uh, perhaps you'd give us your assistance, Mr. Rice. Yes, sir. You were looking to get the Charlotte rolls out before the fever broke? A judgment, Fogarty. Essential in shipping matters. I hear you were aboard the Samantha when she docked. Then you hear wrong. Uh, let me commend you two things, Fogarty. A judgment and accurate information, uh, both essential in running your own business. I told you to look at that halyard. Go on, jump to it. Now you've got to serve my honor. Let go of the broke halyards. Bring the cameras down. Delay that rope. Captain, sir. Drop the main rope. The Samantha was rotten with it, sir. I murdered her on that ship. That's why. Don't touch him, sir. Go below and get me the play flag. When we float off, it is one ship that will go home with regulations nailed to the mast. Captain Fogarty, sir. Oh, yes, Fogarty. You are representing the mercantile interests. I was so elected, sir, since you asked for an independent assessment. I see now. Well, it uh, would appear that there has been some breach of the quarantine laws. Clearly. I doubt whether anyone will be in a hurry to own up to such a uh, disaster. I can understand that. I, for one, would be happier if my nephew were not involved. Well, it may be that there are more people involved than at first seems apparent. You're very cagey, Fogarty. How so, man? A plaguey guano boat with neither sight nor sound of her owners? Well, it was... The outdoor officer, sir. Oh, I'm obliged to you, Mr. Rice. Thank you. Come along, John. Be seated. This is Captain Fogarty, who's assisting me. I see no reason why we can't be brief. Sit down, sir. John, 
I'm told you granted the Samantha a clean bill of health. Sign the pratique. Is that true? It is, sir. Upon what examination? Upon the master's say so, sir. The master of the Samantha declared no fever. I asked him that question, and the answer was in the negative. No fever aboard? None, sir. By his declaration. And you had no reason to disbelieve him, then? No, sir. What are papers in order? It seemed so, sir. Paul, were you satisfied? She had consul signatures from ports of loading and departure, including rat certificates. They seemed in order. Then I was concerned with the bond. It was heavily depleted, but there was no evasion. In fact, you had no reason to believe in anything untoward. No, sir. But clearly, clearly I was wrong. Oh, a frank admission, anyway. Have you anything to add, Captain Fogarty? Well, the pratique is generally granted upon the master's say-so, unless anything specific is declared it's not practice to examine the crew. You had no suspicion of fever whatsoever. Not a thought in your mind that you might be hoodwinked. I had no suspicion of fever whatsoever. But I, I put the routine question, and the answer was no fever aboard. Have you anything you wish to say you think might help us? No, sir. Except to say... Yes? Except to say I'm deeply grieved at what's happened, sir. Oh, very well. You can go. We'll call you. Colic. Did you notice his hand shaking, Fogarty? I did, sir. Grief or guilt? Come on, you've been a shipmaster. I'm afraid that's for you to decide, sir. I know young John very well. I smell a rat, Fogarty. Perhaps more than one. What puzzles me is the crew. The crew? The Samantha's crew. Now, she was a Chilean vessel, but those men who died were mainly Liverpool men. Oh, I knew some of them, a boarding house package if ever I saw one. But they made no voice from South America. How can you say that? They signed off the Samantha. Well, a week before the Samantha arrived, those men were seen around the Liverpool docks. But they were not her original crew? Couldn't have been. They must have been shipped out to her in passage. Shipped out? For what reason? What happened to her own crew? Well, in view of the present conditions, it could be that her own crew died of yellow fever. But who shipped the crew out to her? My brother sent no word. No, Captain Baines was in a hurry to get to sea. Just asked me to give you the money. Did he not say whether Charlotte Rhodes was sailing? No, he did not. We learned this morning that cesspit is to be blown up and the water supply diverted. All the houses will have to be emptied. There's a danger that we'll have to move. Move? So here is too close and this corner of the court is too old. They've been looking for an excuse to bring it down. Does that mean that you'll lose the house? There's a danger of it. The medical authorities have agreed on the danger, but not on what's going to happen to us. If people here could get their hands on the master of the Samantha, there would be murder down in Wellington Street. Do you think... what? Whoever brought that ship in knew that there was fever aboard? Whoever brought her in was thinking of a cargo and not a seaman. The guano was discharged as quickly as if it were gold, and the ship put out again as fast as they could manage. As though they didn't wait to see what they'd left behind. And they must have known. Someone here in Liverpool took the crew out to her. Must have done. It's Liverpool seamen lying limed and tarred in pauper's graves. And they might just as well have been stabbed, for there's not one alive to tell the tale, not one. Take her up, dead into the eye of the wind. Pay out all you've got and let the anchor go. When you get back, we'll catch her off. There you go. We're praying to God the tide will rise before the wind threatens. Aye, aye, sir. We'll soon have her off. About Captain O'Neill, didn't I? I think he knew there'd been fever aboard the Samantha. But he risked going aboard himself. So he must have thought the fever had blown itself out. It's not just the fever. It's the drowning of fevered sailors. I don't think he knew about them. We'll soon find out what he knew and what he didn't know. Captain, sir. Yes? If I don't get home, you won't put me over the side alive, will you? While I'm still living. No, son. Not me.
in the slack on the windlass. Come round to the quarter! Did you know they were going to skip? No, sir, but I heard them muttering. They wouldn't go forward, sir. Yellow Jack. I'll get you home safe if I have to kid you from here to the Mersey. Never whistle in a ship, son. But I... Never! We've got too much bearing down upon us as it is. Come on. Then you will admit nothing? No, not be treated like some trembling apprentice robbing for its master. James, seven men are dead. Look, I've been at sea since I was 14 years old. Ship's logs are full of such tragedies. You ferried sailors out to the Samantha at the owner's request. But did you know that there was fever aboard? She was a Chilean ship. Is that an answer? Well, can I be responsible for every filth like port in the world? No, but Liverpool men are dead and you are evading something. W whatever it may be, why don't you come forward? It's not just myself, it's Fraser. Albert Fraser. I involved him in a share of the Samantha's profits. Now that his father is to be chairman of this inquiry, with no other course but to remain silent. Oh, James, I fear for you. If it's not one evasion, then it's another. Evasion? You cannot give a straight answer. And your concern for other people is so small that it amounts to a kind of heartlessness. And it... it disgusts me. Oh, does it indeed? I thought that if I was to separate from you, it would bring you to some understanding of me. Of values, even. Of some concern other than your pocket. But it's not done so. You go from one purpose to the next, not caring what happens to other people. Not those whom you employ, not even your wife. You're selfish, ruthless, and you have no cares in the world that cannot be measured on a balance sheet. I see your tongue has sharpened in my absence. But nothing has happened to your conscience. I gave you your choice. To deny my principles or to leave your house. I and you chose to leave. And I said I would not come back unless you asked me. And I meant it, James. I'm surprised at your impertinence at calling here unannounced. You must want something. And how is your fiancé? Well, your brother James was very fortunate to get the Charlotte Roads out before the fever broke. He was smart to get a cargo. What was it? You'll not pick my brains on that score, Daniel Fogarty. 